Oh, go, go right ahead. <laughs> go back in session. Just don't look at us with the food. Mayor, members of council, uh, tonight the third item on your agenda is the uh, city seal discussion. I'm going to ask Lynn if he'll walk us through this discussion, please. Well, thank you, folks. Tonight what we want to talk about is about some proposed changes to the seal. They're actually modifications. Your basic seal will stay the same because we're going to have a little bit of conversation about that. And this is more advisory than anything else is the matter. Well, Carmen Miracle will tell you that the actual city seal is this thing that you see here on the screen as it is because that's what she actually stamps your uh, documents with as such there and other things as it is. And there's been a modification to that official seal that they actually have a stamp that looks similar to this as it is. But, um, you know, that's where things go from, from that perspective. This, though, came after this did. And this, some of you might have a memory of this being what the city was represented by for many years. And of course, the key component of that was, was what was then City Hall, uh, that we now know is the former site of the police department, as it is, and hence the danger of putting a building on something that you want to have for preserve for history, because you may end up tearing it down or something to the end of that. But also key to the fact that over years they added the word a home of Camp Lejeune and of course it was one of the few that actually had a, um, you know, a Marine Corps Eagle Globe and anchor attached to it and in representation of the commanding officers typically having been a, a general at the time the best we can find from any notations and some, some reflected history by uh, Mr. Tallman and such there, the stars got added to, to the site too to kind of refray that militaristic um, 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 activity that that once had had. Well, obviously when the um, city council purchased the building that we're in now, in its first iteration, um, mm -hmm. it started a conversation and Pat Thomas um, it, it, it re retained the services of uh, Jim Phillips, who was an artist in residence and um, worked at um, Coastal Carolina Community College. Um, he, I think he's demonstrated much more of his artistic ability here of late um, with his paintings than he, he, he did while he was at Coastal, but he is a talented person. And he sought out some things that were from the seal, but they were the, the guidance the council gave at the time was something that was more updated, um, that something that was uh, reflective of our coastal, our pride of the river as it was, and things such as that. And this is what the, the iteration that was initially adopted by the um, city council um, was, was one of the working drafts that came to be. Well, I as you folks know, um, the part of anything that you reproduce like this, you've got to look at what the colors are that are being reproduced. And um, in those times, you, you seldom ran across four color presses that were economical to operate. And this one actually used something that had to do with several spot colors as it was. And there were some issues that will reflect on that as to the future. But this was part of the issue with this was about how the color selections were made. And at the time, the color selections were not standardized. They were just um, artist swaths that were, were done at that time. Many of you know, obviously, we were very proud in 1992 when our community was designated as an All-America City. Um, and it brought a lot of pride to it and its principal um, recognition that that designation brought under the leadership of um, then city manager Jerry Bittner was of how this community was a caring community. Who did you say was the city manager at that time? Then city manager was Jerry Bittner. That was the handsome and talented city manager. I did not use that uh, <laughs> title. Well, <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> so um, to the end of that, um, having received national recognition for that, and um, th that was in response to the first Gulf War, many of you will remember, um, action was taken to actually put on the city seal um, the words, a caring community. And um, you'll see um, the, uh, Mr. Bittner's uh, signature as uh, his, uh, his characteristic initials on this agenda item when after a um, comment was made from the um, commander of the air station, um, there was action that was taken to actually add the words MCAS New River. And um, since the um, Eagle Globe and Anchor had kind of been left off of the iterations that had been made, um, that's when it got added back in at that time as it was. And this was um, 1993 um, after that time. Well, as things happened, I remember we talked about in the first one about these colors that were selected. And this is the one we found that was in play prior to the 93 iteration as it was there. Um, that we have these four colors, again, 
they're undesignated colors, um, um, typically called spot colors, and that you have to, you know, match them to something as it was. And this is particularly what we're using right now. And of course, with the caring community added, the yellow ribbon added, um, these were all things that you know you wanted to see added on there as it was. And again, we were using some colors and we tried to match them best to what we could find that was a Pantone match for that. And actually the blue that was used in that was um, what's called reflex blue. And anyone who's done printing or had done some stuff like that knows that reflex blue is, um, is the, the printers really hate that stuff because blue is the last color to dry on printed materials when you use actual ink it because it has so much of the the chemicals that are in it and things such as that and as you can see from the sample in the upper right um, you can take reflex blue and you can even reflect different light in it and it will have a different color it will actually look purple as it goes um, in that so there's there's been a lot of interpretations that have been made of that well, I want to talk now back about the, the, the actual seal that we're using now and some things such as that. And because of that blue color, and believe you and me, where every time we would print the calendar, one of the things that had to happen was back then we had to let it dry for a period of time before they could actually fold it and do the saddle stitches on it, which was one, another delay in, in what had to do because of all the blue that was, that was used in it at that time as it was. And um, back in the day when, when, when you were printing, um, you had to pay extra to have all this different spot colors run as it was is the point there. I want to call attention to the big J. That has been something that since 1981 has been a part of your seal and has been part of a symbol that it was. When in 1998, um, the City Council um, authorized the creation of the Jacksonville Youth Council. Um, several of the students there were asked to give from inspiration of what was then the City Seal to come up with something that was related to that that could be used for the Youth Council as a designation for that. And so action, it w actually it was Sharon McGinnis who works with Don Herring, her son, um, and a group of other students came up with this as their representation of homage to the, um, the city seal and reflecting that. And again, it institutionalized the J um, for that. Even there was a time when the, um, the police department used that J's representation to designate cabs that had paid their fees on time. <laughs> and they would do that as it was to, to make forward as is. When in 2006 we were starting up the Jacksonville Transit, um, you, we wanted to bring something forward to you because they wanted some marketing materials, they wanted some things, they wanted something that was simplistic. And so we presented to you some options, um, your predecessor, some of you, uh, as to what to do with that. And part of the issue was to, was to, again, concentrate on that big J, but perhaps do something where the J became a part of a void between two colors. The color to the right was selected because it was a complementary, it was the exact color that was out of the seal as best we could find. And the blue was taken from the sky color that was in your city seal. So these were two colors that were coming from the seal as it is and presented forward from that point. And that's how Jaxel Transit got its logo was designation by the council. And because we adopted Toma as the city's, you know, font that we were using at the time there, that also became a part of what the symbolism was for that as it is. And when we were to put up signs in front of the most recent building since that was designated, we followed that as part of a style guide that we were creating uh, for creating signs and, and wayfinding signs and the sign that was actually put at the water treatment plant. I want to just mention to you a couple of um, things that um, we're not particularly proud of, but has done as modifications and adaptations of the city seal over time because people just seek to fill a void when they don't have something. Here's where that oval gets represented in embroidery as a circle. And of course, you'll see the fonts are nowhere near what the fonts were that were in the city seal, but in the embroidery needle, they were made to look like this. This is when a sponsorship came up and of course the oval becomes squished and encircled. We've had even um, city employees that, that did that in their, in their um, representation in their city stationery as it is. Um, the principal problem that we have from a digital point of view is the caring community, if you don't put, uh, if the, not, a printer term is a stroke around it, but if you don't put a line around it, you can't make it out. Um, and so here is a screenshot of what it looks like on the TV screen at home. 
when you when you have it at some reduced sizes, you lose the words caring community, and they're just gone as it is. And you'll also notice that some header dining, that's those vertical lines in the in the um, sun, have been created by the the lines, the vertical lines don't match up with the exactly the 480 lines that are in television. And so they heterodyne because they, they try to go back and forth between them. Sometimes you'll see where people will wear a tie that'll just look really electric on the air, you know. And that's, that's what that process is that's done there as, it, as a matter. Now, here's an example of where someone did put a stroke in, but they reduced the size so significantly that the caring community word um, uh, looks muddled because the stroke became larger than the actual words were there and it just didn't get represented um, very well at all. And of course, we've all seen where somebody takes the city seal and puts it in such a manner that it um, barely resembles what it once was. And in this one, it looks like actually the sun has been speared instead of um, sinking over the image of the, of the water there as it is. And this one looks, uh, you know, with rounded corners. And in this course, obviously, they did the best they could, but they actually deconstructed the, the city seal to get it all on a banner. And, and that was what was happened here. Well, what are we proposing? We are proposing that we have a much simpler, um, scalable um, city seal, something that we can take and clean up and make something that would happen. Um, we, we think that this would make it so that it's more likely that it will be presented in a proper way that's given, given the respect that we should have for the city seal. And we definitely want to avoid reflex blue. We, we, we don't like that. And we want to bring together all of the marks of the city of Jacksonville and your affiliated organizations as much as possible. And we want to make it so that when you have to present the city seal in sizes that are very small, mm -hmm or in some sort of representation that you would be able to have a guide that was already there for you as to how that should happen. And so consequently, we looked at the city seal and clearly um, the things that stand out are the big J, the clouds, the water, and the sun, representing our coastal community, representing our fair weather that we see here, and the J. And what this you see here is just that we've cleaned that up We've modernized it a little bit by creating a better end to the clouds so that they are. And we've created more of an oval that can be actually represented and digitized in a much better way that doesn't look like it doesn't fit inside the, the larger oval that is the background for your seal. Now, to that end, um, we added the words Camp Lejeune and New River Air <coughs> Station and the Eagle Globe and Anchor properly displayed in that area. And we updated the Eagle Globe and Anchor to one of the licensed um, Eagle Globe and anchors that the Marine Corps allows to be used at this time as it is. And then um, from that, um, the caring community is no longer just kind of hung out over the J. It's actually presented in a way that will allow it to be scaled so the words are still there. And of course, the ribbon is still there. And that presents to you, um, you know, this in all forms and fashions that you can blow it up or take it down a little bit better with having those words presented in a font and a presentation um, that can be more readable. And of course, for the nomenclature, um, the title, we use the, the font that we are using, adopted now as our font for the city of Jacksonville as it is. So that's where it is. Now, about other representations of this as it is, this shows how we have created already some um, one color versions that we can already have in our arsenal that, for people to use. So when you have to present it in one color, here's what it would look like. And because of some things that you have to do in reverse, such as the grease caps that we give away to try to encourage people to put it in a can or something there, that's put on blue plastic. And you have to print that in reverse, whereas a roller comes over it and rubs the white on it as it is, because a white grease cap might not be the best thing to have um, as it is. So this already presents that as to what it would look like. Now again, keeping on with that J being the strongest part of your seal here, um, we have adopted a smaller version that would be principally used when you really need to shrink it down. It would be used for other versions, but when you have to simplify it, when you're looking at things such as embroidery or something, where you look at something that you have to make small, here is an already example of what that could be as it is. And toward the end of savings, while we, we haven't really reduced the number of colors because print presses and processes now are, are such that we 
we're not charged by the color. If you're going to print something in color, you, you print it now unless you're going to run spot color or something. But basically, what we've done here is to say when you have a limited number of colors, we can get by with using three colors by using tones and tints and hues. Uh, by taking that and presenting that in this way. And you'll notice we kept the caring community. We've kept that in this size where you have this simplified one when you have to use something for this function as it is. And toward the palette of what is available out there, now we have created a palette in which can be reproduced and sign makers like this where you give them alternates as to what to do. This now can be reproduced and whether you use, and some of you know computers, you know that you have the RGB, the red, green, you know, blue, um, that you might have a hex color if you're going to put something on the web that you want to match. And of course, the Pantone matching systems where people have seen these book colors and things like that. That's what we have. We have all of that available to us um, now in, in a standard guide. We've used this palette um, for some other things, for your other family of stuff. For instance, when the Tourism Development Authority adopted this as their as their destination symbol for Jacksonville, and obviously the homage to the Freedom Fountain, showing our welcome to all those who pass through Onslow County in, in, um, in, in service to their country. Um, we obviously chose the Tahoma fonts to keep it in the family of matters there, and the blue is the city blue that we have modified to this. It's a blue that um, it, it drives much faster than reflex blue, and so it's much more apparent to that end. And this palette, um, it, for instance, the TDA has available to them a whole palette of how they can change this so if they merchandise this project, um, they're able to adapt it to doing things such as that as it is. And toward the end of that, um, you know, it represents well when scaled up and scaled down. Um, and this is one of the billboards that um, we would propose to put up, um, you know, welcoming in the people coming for the Marine Corps Marathon. As you know, that's been one of the most successful projects that the um, TDA has done, a project that was basically, um, it, it existed, but no one knew much about it until the TDA um, advertised it and got the word out. And here's how an airport representation can be made, welcoming people to our community and uh, welcoming them to participate in our events. And here's another one where it carries the tagline, Heroes Welcome Here, as part of a merchant's program to get people to buy in um, to this program as it is. Um, obviously, when, um, when um, um, Richard came aboard, we, we created the Clean and Green Jacksonville campaign. It was something that um, obviously we're all very proud of. And, if there's any shirts that should be worn by the Parks Division, they should be clean and green shirts, to be sure. And um, we kept in it this palette that has been created. That blue is the same blue that's in your city seal now, or that we're proposing, rather. And the blue, the lighter blue, um, even though it bears a shocking resemblance to Carolina blue, is also um, a blue that comes from the sky in, in the city seal, as it is there, too, on the matter. And so what we're presenting to you is just basically, here's our thoughts about simplifying the city seal, making it so it's more modern, so it's more reproducible, so that we have actually um, uh, graphic brand standards that we have as to how these are to be used and that we can, you know, with, if, with, if you so choose that you can adopt these and that we can have these in play for what is to be done um, for the city seal. So that's our update to that. Do you have anything that actually can that we can go back and look at the current city seal versus the the proposed one that you have on the screen? That is the current city seal that we're using, and that is the one we're proposing. So the only thing, if I'm seeing it correctly, the only thing that is actually removed while several things are relocated, if you go back a second, appears to be the seagull every other element that's in this is on the other seal except for the, the bird. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And is that a seagull? Um, that was what was it was described as, although there were some other <laughs> words used to describe it too. But <laughs> yes. By the way, just to correct your history, the Cary community and the ribbon came apart at different times. Yes, sir. If I misspoke, I didn't mean to. Um, I think it was certainly the, ri the ribbon first after the Gulf War, and then the caring community after All America City. Absolutely. Thoughts and questions? That's good. I think from you know I can only speak from uh, the production side of it, and it, you know I've had the opportunity to create this logo many times over the years at the sign company for different projects and. And the yellow 
just as, yeah, it's terrible. It's terrible to recreate because it's too small and you have to stroke it. And uh, He's talking about this I'm character. talking about the caring community. The letter <coughs> style, it's, uh, I think the changes are good. And the part that I like about the changes is that unifying the fonts, tying it in with the TDA, the colors, uh, the standardization of the colors, it makes it easy to go out and, and have one seal made that looks the same in everything that you do. Because um, different print processes use different processes, but color matching and fonts, and, and uh, it's very difficult to do when you have to deal with those, those sort of letters. At this scale, it's pretty easy, but when you have to do it two inches by two inches or two inches by three inches, uh, it's just very difficult. <coughs> That's good. Mr. Bitter, you had a real hand in the history of this. What's your thoughts? Well, I'm sort of a traditionalist on this, and I told Glenn, but I have to admit, it looks good, and quite frankly, when you showed the old seal and the new one, I didn't even notice that the seagull was missing, so I guess it doesn't bother me. <laughs> The I old like seal is what he said was is it actually is three different fonts. There's Times New Roman, uh, Times, and then there was a derivative that we've not quite been able to reproduce faithfully from the document. That was well, and, and you got strokes on some things, you don't have strokes on other things, and that's in the design world that's... You know, this, you know that's for you guys all concerned about production and printing. Just from the standpoint of appearance, I think it's attractive. Good. Now let me ask you this: At some point in time, I believe you showed a an agenda item that adopted a seal. Yes. If we're going to change to this, yes, sir. I'm assuming that takes an official agenda action. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, appropriate. And what we'd like to do is that we'd like to, and Carmen's got some of those. If you'd like, we'd actually ask that that you adopt with that uh, graphic brand standards. So that we can all live by the same Bible, <coughs> and kind of go from that from that point. I have a we'll question. circulate that to you. I have a question. Yes, sir. Should we adopt this, Glenn? Um, how will that affect the police vehicles? And is this something that you guys are going to change over time, <coughs> or is this going to be an effort to get stuff standardized so that it starts all looking the same? I think that you would prudence would say that we we would work it in and um, just make the modifications as, as new things come up to be printed and done and if, um, if you so want and we're able to do so we can make some changes in mass on something. As you know on the city vehicle, city police vehicles and the city vehicles that is just one graphic of, of a larger graphic so it wouldn't be horribly expensive just to put the new graphic over the old graphic for some of those vehicles. <coughs> we can do it as you you know as things come up and around. Let's do this. Let's uh, let's look at that. I mean, because to be quite frank with you, you know, I look at the uh, city police car. Uh, I didn't even remember that it had the city seal on it. I remember all of the variations of blue, and I remember that it had <coughs> J on it. But uh, I think the let us let us bring back a a little bit larger package. Uh, one of the things that we are definitely doing is every city vehicle has to have the, the city's name and seal appropriately displayed. It's just like on the new commercial garbage trucks and on our residential trucks. All we had on our residential trucks was a seal that was basically this big on a truck that was 55 feet long. Now as you know we are going, it is expensive, not overly expensive, we now go to the very large seal so the whole packing bed has a city seal that is, what would you guess, three feet? Oh, yeah, and <coughs> four and a half feet for most of them, six on some of the larger vehicles. Yeah, and, you know, appropriate display, and, and the words Jacksonville on it. Uh, I think I would also like to recommend to you this before you take formal council action. I would like to go ahead and have some things printed so that you can really, you know, I'm, I'm the type, I like to hold it, I like to see it, I like to taste it. And what I'd like to do is get some uh, actual city 
logos printed up, get some banner, not banners, but uh, placards printed so you can actually look at it in real life, not computer life. Is that acceptable well, to you? If I may just add, uh, that's fine, you can do that, but if you're going to standardize it, I would assume that you're going to create stitch patterns for any embroidery. And basically, by that, it will always be the same. When you when you have PMS colors and actual CMYK and <coughs> RGBs and uh, stitch patterns, you won't get a variation. It'll be exactly the same every time. And that's why but I that's want you to. to you that's why I want you to actually see it. Mm -hmm. If you remember when we had the discussion on the fire <coughs> patch and the police patch, we actually brought you the patch. That way you could see exactly what is going to be on there, not just a computer rendering of what it's going to be. So if y'all are comfortable, I'd like to take that next step, and then we will proceed with formal adoption. Is that acceptable? Is that going to be adoption with a policy on display on vehicles, all vehicles, city vehicles? We can, as far as I'm concerned, that policy already exists. If it doesn't, we will see that it does exist. And they are on all vehicles, right? As far as I'm, as far as I know, I think the well, only except for the undercover vehicle. <laughs> I mean, why the hell would you want to put them on? I think the only. <laughs> 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 There's a difference in displaying it on the vehicle when it's this size or when it's that size. That's right. Yeah. Let's be practical. <laughs> well, I think Let's that's, well, that's right part of your. Uh, right. <laughs> that's in the style. That's in your style guide. Yeah. Yeah. Not in this one. It's in the style. Public, my, my public <laughs> <laughs> Those conclude that concludes the items in the workshop tonight. Did you have anything you want to discuss with us in this one? No, sir. I think that'll about do it for tonight. Unless anybody really has anything. Thank Everybody you very adjourned. much. Thank you. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.